In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set the home page for your application. Now, I typically like setting the home page down at the very bottom because this is the last route that the file is going to see. So, uh, to set it, you just type in root and then the name of the controller. So, for this one, it's going to be pages controller and then home is going to be what our page actually is. So now if I come over here, restart the server, and then go in the browser. If you remember from before, the Ruby on Rails landing page has been our home page up until now. So if I just go localhost 3000, now you can see that it's defaulting to the home page instead. So just because we went through that pretty quick, I want to play around with it a little bit. So if I go into pages controller, let's see what happens if we want to print out all of our project titles. So I'm going to do a database query here, call it projects and say project dot all. And this is going to bring back all of our projects, which is usually a bad idea. Usually you'd want to do, you know, project all dot you know, limit 100 or you know, something like that because you wouldn't ever want to bring all of something back from the database. But in this case, I know we don't have hundreds or thousands of records in the database, so we're fine. So now, if you remember, by placing this instance variable here inside this method, it means we have access to this inside of the view. So if we go app, views, pages, home now, and I want to say h1 is our home page. And now I just want to print out our titles. So I'm going to start it off by bringing back our variable. So say projects each do project inside of our pipes. And then end at the end of it. Now if you're not familiar with this, this is embedded Ruby. You're going to be seeing it throughout the course, so you'll definitely get used to it. And so now any what this is when we start it off with this and end it in the end, this is called a code block. Inside a code block, we can run other embedded Ruby scripts and anything here inside of projects is going to keep on getting run. So if we have a hundred projects, whatever is inside of this code block right here will get run a hundred times. Now, and it, we know that because we have each, which means it's going to iterate and then do, which means it's a code block. This project right here, this is optional, but we would want to do it because this is going to be an instance variable for us to use. So this instance variable now is going to be able to be used inside of the code. So I'm going to put a little HTML here. So I'm going to say a paragraph tag, and then in here I'll put some embedded Ruby. So I'm going to say project title and uh, also make it strong so that we can uh, uh, we can see some boldness here. So take the strong tag, and this is just HTML, nothing fancy going on here. Uh, okay, so what this is doing, it's iterating over all of our projects, and then it stores, each time it stores the value of that particular project, inside of the instance variable. So if you remember back when we were running our queries and we talked about the different bugs that you could run into if you grabbed all of the values and tried to call title on them, this is a way we get around it. We're not calling this on the array, we're calling this title value on a single object each time. So that, let's see if, uh, okay, I have the server running. And now if I go back to the browser, hit refresh, and that all worked. So it went, grabbed all the values from the project database, and it printed the title out and applied the bold to them. So that's how you can use your pages controller to run a query, pass that query via an instance variable into, the, uh, into your view so you could print it out.
Now, this is where the right way to do rails is a very, it's very important to know compared with the easy way. If any of you have come from a PHP background, especially PHP that didn't use frameworks, then uh, you may have been used to doing something like this, where you bypass any kind of controller concept at all, and inside the view, you'd actually put your query. So you do something like project, dot all, each, and iterate through it. That is definitely something that you never ever want to do because that's just really bad programming. You don't want your uh, your queries inside of the view code. So that's what we have the controller to do. It can run our basic queries and then pass that information onto the view. Now one other thing before I end this video that I want you to note is you notice in this embedded Ruby right here the angle bracket and then the percent sign the, and this query run and compare that with this angle bracket percent sign equals sign right here for project title. What this does when you put the equal sign there this is going to print out to the page. So if I put something, let me just do an example. So if I want to have the description there, so if I come and hit refresh, now you can see all the descriptions are getting printed out. What if I take this equal sign away? Come back and nothing is there. So the equal sign is what you do if you want to print it out uh, whatever you're running via Ruby and you want to print that out to the browser. We don't want to put an equal sign up here. I'll show you what happens and I've done this before. I actually did a couple days ago just because out of habit a lot of times you'll just type all three of these symbols in and uh, sometimes yeah I don't even realize that I'm doing it but if I, you do that you'll know right away because if you come back hit refresh you'll see at the very end it actually pulled the whole object query into it which isn't something that you typically would want to do so this is how you can print all of this out this is how you can set the home page and then print some values out from a query using the whole model view controller architecture that Rails has.